Lung cancer kills more people than breast, colon, and prostate cancer combined every year. 1 in 16 men will get lung cancer and 1 in 13 women. It is the leading cause of death by cancer in the United States, killing more than 161,400 people per year. It starts deep in the lungs, causing wheezing, shortness of breath, chest pain, coughing, and even sometimes the coughing up of blood. Imagine your parent being able to only breathe through a straw, for this is as it would be with lung cancer. Imagine they are hooked up to a ventilator for life because they can no longer breathe on their own. It spreads to their nervous system, causing excruciating headaches, blurred vision, and dizziness. Perhaps even the skeletal system, causing terrible joint pain and weakness in bones. Clearly, not a good image. This terrible disease is normally caused by continuous smoking, destroying lung tissue and making it very difficult for the lungs to filter out dangerous chemicals that appear in cigarettes. 87% of all lung cancer cases involve smokers. This may sound very scary and intimidating, but there are steps you can take to help prevent it. But first, you should understand how your body works in relation to lung cancer. When the lungs are at normal status, every breath you take passes through the nose, where it is warmed, moistened, and cleaned. Then it enters the trachea, passes the vocal cords, and enters the branching system of the bronchial tubes in each lung compartment. These surfaces are lined with mucus and cilia. Cilia clean out debris from the air. If you have cancerous lungs, then these cilia are not operational, which means that they can't, cannot clean the air, so debris enters your lungs. The lungs also regulate pH levels in blood. On general breathing rate, regulates the acidity in your blood. Faster breathing is a response to exercise. This restores carbon dioxide levels. The faster your body breathes, the more carbon dioxide is being exhaled, which in turn makes the cells work faster to make the exchange with oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. If the breathing rate reaches extraordinary levels, the body will pass out due to the lack of oxygen and the buildup of carbon dioxide. So if the lungs are not operating properly, then the blood levels are not even. Imagine you are sitting down eating lunch when all of a sudden you pass out. This is the response to low carbon dioxide levels without even exercising. This is what happens when the lungs are cancerous. Lung cancer also affects the nervous system. One way it does this is by spreading in a process called metastasis to the brain. Whenever a disease affects the brain, there are serious dangers. The brain controls all of the body's functions, and if a tumor is present, these functions can be interrupted, causing severe harm. The brain can also be affected during lung cancer because it relies on the circulatory system. When the circulatory system is low on oxygen, as stated earlier, the levels in the brain has to re have to react, sending a message to a receptor, which then begins to regulate a body function that helps the body stay alive given the new circumstances of, stances of low oxygen. I know this announcement may shock, appall, and frighten you, but if you have lung cancer, there is still hope. Although there is no cure for lung cancer, there are still treatments that may help you through surviving the disease. One of the most mentioned and widely known treatments is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is given in a series of drugs, commonly in IV and pill form. These drugs target and attack cells, especially cancer cells, because of their fast rate of multiplying. Chemotherapy is effective and can destroy virtually all cancer cells, buying time for the patient. Chemotherapy also breaks down your immune system, so doctors cannot continue this therapy for too long. Overall, chemotherapy is effective, but it does not cure lung cancer. Another treatment is radiation therapy, which doctors use high-energy ionizing radiation commonly used on the outside of the body and penetrates through the skin without harming it. Radiation can also be used inside of the body through surgery. The radiation stops the division of cells and neutralizes them and stop the DNA from continuing to deform, thus not allowing cancer to continue to multiply and it kills off cancer cells. Similar to chemotherapy, it cannot be used continuously for too long of durations of time because it can cause side effects. If the cancer forms a mass in your lungs and has not spread throughout your body, Doctors can perform a surgical resection of the mass and also removing some of the tissue around the infected area so that they do not miss anything. Again, surgical removal of masses caused by cancer does not necessarily mean the cancer is gone. It is very possible that the cancer could flare up again and cause another mass. If you do not wish to proceed to utilize these treatments, for some reason there are, alter there are other alternative non-medical procedures that are not scientifically proven. 
There are procedures like acupuncture and detoxification of unwanted chemicals in your body. If you want to decrease your risk of ever getting lung cancer, then there are preventative lifestyles and choices you can make. The most important choice you can make to avoid lung cancer is to not smoke. Smoking can destroy the coating over the inside of your throat that is supposed to clean air. The smoke can also destroy the compartments in your lungs that are designed to do the same task. Avoiding smoking, in the end, will lead, um, lead you to living a better life and keep you healthier. Also, try to avoid other contact with smoke, like second and third hand smoke. Scientists do not know enough about cancer to figure out what causes it, but they do know what's, that smoking increases the risk of someone obtaining this disease. Since scientists do not know enough about cancer, the only lifestyle choices I can inform you about is to eat healthy, exercise regularly, and refrain from putting harmful chemicals in your body.